But what gives God the authority to tell me not to do something? The obedience thing. What gives him the authority to say for me to do something that I don't want to do? Or what gives him the authority to say that don't do this, Toby, although you want to do it? I mean, let's be honest. There are certain rights that I feel like that I have. And uh, what gives God the right to say don't do this or to do something else? You tell me. What, what do you think it is? There, sounds like a charismatic church. Let's slow down here, all right? Okay. One at a time. Raise your hand. All things decently in order. Yes. Okay. He is Lord. Okay, creator, fought. Bessie, you looking ahead. All right, yes. Okay, he bought us. He bought vicarious substitutes by redeeming. I have bought with a price, I bought my own. Okay, very good. Okay, very biblical answer there. We finally got to it there at the end. Uh, okay, what else? What else? Any other reasons? Okay, we, we've heard many of them, and some of them, some of them listed beyond what I read. There's all of, there's many reasons why he has a right to tell me what to do. Okay, uh, he is the creator. He made me. I mean, he, he he owns me because of that. Okay, he bought me, so I'm his possession, right? How about you go? How about you go and uh, you buy a car, and uh, it doesn't ever want to do anything that you that you want to do. You turn right, it turns left. You turn on the heat, the air conditioner comes on. You know, that would not be a very good, good car. It's a bad illustration, though. But the point is that he bought us, and so we are his possession. We do what he, what he wants us to do. You know, there are different reasons. Uh, how about this one? Just the fact that he's stronger than me, all right? You know, you, you generally listen to the people that are stronger than you. Okay, up, on, uh, up at Howard Young, the institution there, the, the prison, the, why do the... Why do the, the uh, the inmates listen to the guards, well, because they have SWAT teams that can be called in a moment's notice. And because the, most of them are big, burly guys, some of them are women behind glass and things like that. And some of the SWAT team are women, I found out. Well, I met some of them, okay? Because they're stronger, they control them, they have mace, they have billy clubs, they have shields, okay? One reason, you know, that we have to do what God tells us to do, he, in fact, is he's stronger than us. Okay, not just that he's creator, not that he's bought, but not that he's stronger. Tonight I want to talk about something completely different. I want to talk to us tonight about the idea of, of walking our walk in a way that is obedience, uh, obedient to the Lord because of the father-son and father-daughter relationship that he has with us as defined in the word of God. Now there's no way that I can just stand up here and, and just throw it out there and say, th throw this out here and say, you know, uh, you need to relate to your, the way that you relate to your earthly dad. Just realize there's a father in heaven, so you need to obey him. I can't do that for some obvious reasons. Look here. I'm going to tell you what my 14-year-old daughter said right before we went out of the house. She knew what I was going to talk on. She said, Dad, I'm going to tell you, she said, I'm going to tell you that sometimes it, that doesn't work. I said, what do you mean? So sometimes, she, she, you know, out of the mouth of the babe, she says, sometimes it doesn't work to tell people to obey their heavenly father because they've had terrible earthly dads. Okay, there's, a great, there's great wisdom there. Tonight, I am not trying to appeal to you by the word father, word dad. What we're going to look at is we're going to look at characteristics of how God relates to us as a father. We're going to see verses. So put away your thoughts of any kind of other dads, other people's dads, your opinion of my dad, your opinion of your own dad. Maybe some of you didn't have a dad. Okay? What I want you to relate to is to understand through Bible verses, forget anything. Don't try to compare God to your earthly dad, if he's good or bad. Compare God to what he says he is as a father. And I think that it's going to be great. And with the motive tonight that we walk obeying him happily because he's so worthy. Because he is such a good father. 1 John chapter 1, as we look at verse number 3 here, we see this. All right, we see that the author says, all right, notice beginning of verse number 3, I want you to look through there. It says, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. It says the, the author here, the inspired author, he says he's writing or he's declaring scripture to them so that the readers can have fellowship with Christians, with himself, with Christians, other Christians, with the Father, God the Father, and with the Son, Jesus Christ, the Savior. Okay, verse number four says that this fellowship of, 
fellowshipping with the Father, communication, liking each other, talking to each other, two-way conversation, uh, enjoying each other, thinking about each other, everything that word fellowship means, you know, simplest terms, two fellows in the same ship, you know, you know, the whole, that whole concept of, 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 uh, of, being, of friendship and closeness with each other, that whole concept is necessary for full joy, right? You know that you can't have the fullest joy in your life that you should have if your fellowship with your father is not right, your heavenly father, that is, right? If you are looking for full joy. Now, I, I want to just say, some, say something here. That is not the primary reason to have fellowship with God, but it is a reason, and it is stated in these verses. These things have I written unto you that your joy may be full. If you want full joy, say amen with all your heart. Amen. Do you want to be happy? Amen. I do too. I realize I'm not the center of the universe, but it would be a nice thing. And that's kind of what it throws in here. The fullness of joy in your heart can only come when your fellowship with the Lord is clean, transparent, trust is there, belief in what he said, his promises, uh, uh, submission to him is there. Full willingness to obey him is there. That is fullness of joy. That's where full joy will come from. Will come from, yes. He then states in verse number five, you notice in the scripture here, that God says that he is something. What is he in verse number five? He's light. He's light. Does it mean that he's bright? Well, I'm sure that he is. But is that really what it's meaning? Somebody tell me what it means. When he says that, that he is light and him is no darkness at all, does he, does he mean that he's like a floodlight, a halogen lamp? Okay, okay, he's talking about his holiness, his righteousness. It's talking about his purity, all right? And darkness would be talking about what? All over the Bible, it's talking about sin or evil, okay? So it says that God here is holy. He is perfect. In him is no sin at all, no darkness. Verse 6 states that we have fellowship with the Father, and uh, we walk, if we, if, we, if we say that we have fellowship with the Father, and we walk in darkness, in sin, we're lying. You ever talk to a Christian? How's it going? Great. How's your walk with God? Great. Oh, it's going great. Oh, 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 He's sweeter as the years go by. And they're walking in sin. Okay? That, that person is deceiving himself. That Christian is, not, is deceiving himself. All right? It, the Bible says very clearly we can't have fellowship with him unless we walk obediently in the light as he is in the light. In verse number 7, we're taught that the fellowship comes from walking in the light, obedient walking made possible by the blood of Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 7. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, present tense, is cleansing us from all sin. Okay, what does that mean? Didn't, didn't Jesus die one time and we were cleansed once for all? We, are, we know that we are in the present state of being saved, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, if, verse number 7, we are walking in the light and we also know that we have fellowship one with another. These things come by the power of being saved. All right? I can walk uprightly. I can walk in the light. Read verse 7 again. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And it is true that the state of our lives are that we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Do unsaved people have fellowship with God? Yes or no? No, they don't. Okay. Someone who is walking in the light, a Christian who is walking in a transparency, obedient to God, not pulling in darkness into his light, transparent, open, open state. Verse number nine, if you flip the page, if you have a Schofield Bible, I have a Schofield Bible, switch page. Verse number nine says, you're walking in open confession, you're not harboring sin. Okay, this is a person who is a testimony, they're saved, and they're having fellowship with God. And from this, we know that this is where full joy comes from. Okay, we've just seen that. This whole idea about, from these verses, we learn that our fellowship with the Father is contingent on our obedience with Him. You know, this same Christian who is cleansed by the blood of Christ, who allows himself to walk in darkness, does not have, number one, full joy. And number two, not only that, you know, they, they, they don't have that fellowship with the Lord. They don't have that, that obedience factor that leads to the full joy. Walking in the light. It is a relationship of obeying and submitting to our Father that we need to consider. We need to get away from the idea that God is some kind of big hammer of God that's just waiting to smash us. And we need to understand that He is related to us as a good Father. I don't like to compare Him to any Father.